So here we are back in Sir John Hawkins Square. It's the 30th of November and on the 26th, just four days ago, council finally disclosed the decision that I appealed in court on Friday the 13th of November last year, 2020. And literally it is the email from Mark, from Mark Lowry. So Mark Lowry sent an email on the 11th of June 2020 to Jane Hirons basically saying we should assume from this point on that the square will be called Jack Leslie Square we need to move quickly and that was the day after councillor Chris Penberthy who is the councillor for this ward St Peter of the Waterfront suggested as a nomination to use Jack Leslie so the fact that he nominated him on the 10th of June Mark Lowry made the decision on the 11th of June and then three or four days later on the 15th of June Jane Hirons writes to Jack Leslie's family to ask for permission. Now why is that important? That's important because that means they broke their policy. Their policy on street renaming clearly says that if they are going to use the name of a deceased person then before that deceased person's name becomes a nomination they must get permission from the family in writing. In this case, Plymouth City Council decided to rename this square, after 37 years it being Sir John Hawkins Square, to Jack Leslie Square, and they did so without written permission from the family when they made that decision. They didn't get permission until afterwards, till four or five days later, and then as soon as they got permission, they put these signs up in this square, which by which time they'd already taken the signs down on June the 8th to say that we're going to rename this square Jack Leslie Square. Well, they couldn't do that because they'd been in breach of their policy because they didn't get permission. They got it afterwards, after they'd nominated him and after they chose him. So it's no wonder that when I came to this court behind me, this building, the Magistrates Court in Plymouth, where the signs were taken down without permission, without even asking or telling them, Basically, the decision wasn't on the table because the council never disclosed it, so it couldn't be adjudicated upon. You couldn't tell whether it had followed the legislation and you certainly couldn't tell whether it had followed their policy. So it was deliberate because they knew. They knew they hadn't followed their policy and that's when I came to appeal it in this court that nobody gave a monkey's apart from me jumping up and down going, where's the decision? And it's taken over a year later for that to be confirmed and the case is now with the court of appeal and they will be deciding upon that soon because i spoke to them today and now they've got the decision which i filed yesterday morning to them to say look here it is so basically if the decision had been disclosed and declared in court rather than being omitted and whether that was done deliberately or not or by mistake um it would have changed the outcome of the case. I would have won. I would have proved in this court that Plymouth City Council did not follow their policy on renaming roads and streets, and they did this too quickly. They, did, they didn't follow the right processes, and they, don't, they certainly didn't follow their pro policy, which is why they deliberately, in my opinion, did not disclose the decision in this courtroom, in this court building, because they knew they were in breach, and they knew they would lose, and they did anything they could to make sure that I lost. So I found the decision in emails through an FOI request that I made months after, I made it in December. No, I made it weeks after the judgment, just before Christmas. It took three and a half months to come to me. I had to redraft it four times for them to accept it. It's insane what's happened with this case and it does make you wonder if they are willing to pervert the course of public justice for a case involving a renaming of a street then what else are they doing with big, big decisions and big projects and big money and currently i have 14 grand's worth of costs against me for this matter well i hope that will change soon when the court of appeal realizes how could this magistrate's court make a determination on whether a decision was right or wrong when the decision was never even on the table for to be adjudicated upon and analysed. And that's why I'm very suspicious about a few things. 
Um, District Judge Matson. She was brought in specifically to deal with me and has been brought in for other cases to deal with other people. Interesting. Also that Linda Tawney, the, the council's solicitor and assistant head of legal services, has suddenly taken early retirement and not renewed her practicing certificate from the SRA. Interesting. Because she was in charge of putting the bundle together and probably making sure that the decision wasn't on the table. So my complaints against the local councillors for being in breach of their code of conduct are still being looked at. One of them is with the LGO. There's two, three freedom of information requests now being looked at by the ICO. And I have reported this to the police, but still they've done nothing. And even though I've given them an update, look, look here's the decision. I found it. They didn't, didn't declare it, didn't disclose it, omitted it from the court proceedings, perverted the course of public justice, perjury, fraud, misconduct in public office, malfeasance in public office. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. But that was a quick update. That is where the case is at now, and hopefully we should have word from the Court of Appeal very shortly as to what will happen next. Fingers crossed they do the right thing, because I have, and the council didn't. Watch this space. But this is what happens when you get our Labour woke council running the show. And now we've got a Conservative administration. I'm hoping now they'll do the right thing. And they should start with putting the signs back up in this square, saying Sir John Hawkins Square. And in the meantime, the road next to Plymouth Argyle's football ground that it's on, Home Park, remains unnamed. So I've suggested to the council they name that Mariner's Way. They could name it Paul Mariner's Way, but then they'd have to get permission from the family first before it becomes a nomination. But Mariner's Way, much better. Perfect. <laughs>